the sum and difference formulas. So here's the formulas. If you need to memorize it, here's kind of a neat way. The cosine of the sum of the two angles equals the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. The cosine of the difference of the two angles equals the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. Well, let me show you how this is going to work. Find the exact value of the cosine of 105. So here's our formula, and we're going to add to get to 105. So what I did was I picked 60 plus 45. The reason is is that we know what the cosine of 60 degrees is and what the cosine of 45 degrees is. I'm not going to pick the cosine of 100 plus the cosine of 5 because I don't know what those are right offhand. So you want to pick something that you know for sure. The cosine of 105 degrees is the cosine of 60 degrees. Hopefully you have your unit circle or a table with you. Plus the cosine of 45 degrees, which is the square root of 2 over 2. And that's kind of handy because we have a common denominator. So it'll be 1 plus the square root of 2 over 2. And that's all there is to it. Find the exact value of cosine pi over 12. Well, now we're talking about radians. And in this case, I'm actually going to subtract. What I decided to do was, since we have a fraction here, I'm going to make these so that we have a common denominator. I want this one minus this one to give me 1 pi over 12. Well, 3 pi over 12, I know, reduces to pi over 4. And I know that 2 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 6. And it just so happens I know the cosine of pi over 4 and pi over 6. So the cosine of pi over 12 equals the cosine of pi over 4, which is the square root of 2 over 2, plus the cosine of pi over 6, which is the square root of 3 over 2. Once again, we have a common denominator, which is nice. So our answer will be the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 all over 2. Let's look at the sum and difference formulas for the sines. Find the exact value of the sine of negative pi over 12. So I'm going to subtract again, and I'm actually going to use what I did for the last one. Remember, I want a common denominator, and I know that 3 minus 4 is negative 1, which is actually what's here, negative 1 pi. The sine of negative pi over 12 equals, now this reduces to pi over 4 minus pi over 3. So the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. No, I'm just using the unit circle. There's no magic here. Minus the sine of pi over 3, which is the square root of 3 over 2. And it turns out that it's the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2. Now you might want to remember we cannot put these together because the square root of 2 is not the same thing as the square root of 3. So this turns out to be my answer. So let's do something a little more complicated here. Let's say we know that the sine of alpha is 4 fifths and alpha needs to be between pi over 2 and pi. The sine of beta is negative 2 fifths. Now remember we would change that because we can't have a square root in the denominator. So the sine of beta is negative 2 the square root of 5 over 5 and beta has to be between pi and 3 pi over 2. And they're asking us to find the exact value of the cosine of alpha. So let's look at alpha for a second. We know that the sine of alpha equals 4 fifths. And if we recall, that's y over r. So we need to find x, and I think that's probably the easiest thing to do. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So we have x squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So x squared turns out to be 9. So x equals plus or minus 3. Now we have to decide, is it plus or minus? Well, if we look here, we know that it's in quadrant 2 because it's between pi over 2 and pi. Since it's in quadrant 2, it has to be negative. So the cosine of alpha is negative 3 over 5. And if you remember, that would be x over r. So that's our alpha. 
find the exact value of the cosine of beta. So we're going to be doing the same thing here. We know that the sine of beta equals negative 2 over the square root of 5. And the reason we're going to use this is, once again, this is y over r. We don't want to simplify it because this is not y and this isn't r. Okay, So we're going to do x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if you recall from another video, this is the circle. This is our unit circle idea. Remember, it's not a unit circle because our radius isn't 1. So that's why we have to put this in for r. So we'll have x squared plus 2 squared equals the square root of 5 squared. So we're going to have x squared plus 4 equals 5. So it turns out that x squared is 1. So x is plus or minus 1. Now we have to decide, is it plus or minus? Well, if we look here, we know that it's in quadrant 3. And so we'll have the cosine of beta equals negative 1 over the square root of 5. When we simplify that, we get negative the square root of 5 over 5. So you're probably wondering, well, why are we doing all this? Well, we need to find those to get the exact value of the cosine of alpha plus beta. So let's do that. We know that the cosine of alpha plus beta equals the cosine of alpha cosine beta minus the sine of alpha sine of beta. And now what we're going to do is fill in what we know. So hopefully you've been writing some of this down. The cosine of alpha was negative 3 fifths times the cosine of beta is negative the square root of 5 over 5 minus the sine of alpha, which is 4 fifths, times the sine of beta, which is negative 2, the square root of 5 over 5. Now you could use this for your beta, um, and you could use the unsimplified version for cosine, but it's just easier like this. And when you do the math, it turns out that the answer is 11 the square root of 5 over 25. The sum and difference formulas for tangents. So let's find the exact value of the tangent of 7 pi over 12. So for this one, I've decided to do the addition formula. And we know that the tangent of pi over 3 plus pi over 4 gives us 7 pi over 12. And I'll let you do the fraction math there, but just trust me with that one. So let's follow our formula. So we're going to have the tangent pi over 3 plus the tangent pi over 4, all divided by 1 minus the tangent pi over 3 times the tangent of pi over 4. So now we're going to do a little math here. We know that the tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 plus the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Once again, you should be using your unit circle for this one. And then we'll have 1 minus square root of 3 times 1. So what we have is the square root of 3 plus 1 over 1 minus the square root of 3. Now we can't have the square root of 3 in the denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by 1 plus the square root of 3. And this is a really great test question because it has you doing quite a few things in this question. So we're going to FOIL the top. And it turns out we have the square root of 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus the square root of 3 all over 1 minus square root of 3 squared. We're almost done here. So we have 4 plus 2 the square root of 3 over negative 2. We do need to simplify this. So the top can be reduced to 2 times 2 plus the square root of 3 over negative 2. If we take the 2 out, we still have this negative 1 in here. So we'll end up with negative 2 minus the square root of 3. Find the exact value of the sine cosine inverse of 1 half plus the sine inverse of 3 fifths. 
So there's a bunch of stuff we need to do before we can do anything. The first thing is, is that we know that the cosine inverse of 1 half is the same thing as saying the cosine, and I'm going to call it alpha, equals 1 half. Okay. Now the next thing we know is that from the definition, it has to be between 0, alpha has to be between 0 and pi. And so in this case, when I look at my unit circle alpha is pi over 3. So if I look at the sine of alpha or the sine of pi over 3, I get the square root of 3 over 2. So let's look at the next guy. Now I'll have the sine of beta equals 3 fifths. And we know that this one has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay. This is y over r. And now I'm going to have to do some figuring because on my unit circle I don't have something nice like a half. It's 3 fifths. So that's no problem because we've been doing this a couple times just in this video. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I'm going to put um, 3 in for y and 5 in for r. So it turns out that x squared equals 16 and x equals plus or minus 4. Well from our formula um, it turns out that x has to be a positive 4. So the cosine of beta equals 4 fifths. So now we're ready to do um, so now we're ready to do this and it turns out that we'll have the so it turns out when we have this, we're looking at the sine. Okay, that's the sine of this. So we're going to have the square root of 3 over 2 times 4 fifths. And now we're using our sine formula um, for adding plus 1 half times 3 fifths. And okay, so it turns out. Um, so what we're doing here is we're doing the sine of alpha plus beta. Okay, uh, so it turns out we have 4, the square root of 3, plus 3, almost forgot that one, all over 10, and the top doesn't reduce. So it turns out the answer for this one is 4, the square root of 3, plus 3, over 10. I would like you to try this one. So press pause, find the solution, and play to see if you're correct. So let's look at the solution. For this one, I'm going to be using the cosine of alpha minus beta. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this guy. Well, we know that the tangent of alpha is 5 thirteenths. Well, on our unit circle, we don't have 5 thirteenths, so we're going to have to do the x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if you remember, tangent is y over x. So we end up with 12 squared plus 5 squared equals r squared. And r turns out to be plus or minus 13. But remember, r is our radius, so it has to be positive. So for this one, I'll put it here, our cosine of alpha is x over r, which is 12 over 13, and our sine for alpha is y over r, which is 5 over 13, and we remember that this is in quadrant 1. Now let's look at this one. So we have this sine of beta equals negative 3 fifths, and what's really handy about this one, I'm going to draw the picture up here, the sine is negative down here. So we have y over r. The negative has to go with the 3 because your radius can't be negative. So this is negative 3. This part is 5. 
and this turns out to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's really famous, so I'm not going to do the x squared, y squared thing. So it turns out the cosine of beta is x over r, which is 4 fifths. Okay, the reason is, is that the 4 is positive. So we're going to do our formula. So we're going to find the cosine of alpha minus beta equals the cosine of alpha, which is 12 over 13, times the cosine of beta, which is 4 fifths, plus the sine of alpha, which is 5 thirteenths, times the sine of beta, which is negative 3 fifths. And when you put that all together, hopefully you get 33 over 65. And thanks for watching.